Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Jesus H. Christ, fucking finally. All right. Jerry Reese, the worst general manager in the history of the New York Giants franchise, with a terrible drafting record. The most just ballsless. Is that, is that what I want to say? I think I do. Absolutely no balls on Jerry Reese whatsoever. Biggest pussy GM in the NFL by far. Finally fired from the New York Giants, Ben McAdoo. I don't even know where I have to start with. Ben McAdoo is horrific. Absolutely terrible. He comes in, he's an absolute clown, absolute goon for the Giants in his first year as a head coach, which he never even should have been. The Giants handled the Tom Coughlin situation among the worst they ever could have, as that organization has been an absolute dumpster fire. And as a huge Giants fan, it's been such a disappointment to watch over the past couple years. The Giants snuck into the playoffs last year, not being particularly great, right? Won a couple of close games near the end, um, but lost some easy games as well. It was just, just a weird season, made the playoffs, and then lost a weird playoff game the Packers, but that's not what this is about, right? Ben McAdoo comes up, absolute clown, makes the playoffs, comes back his next season, he's got slicked back hair like he's in the fucking mob. I don't know what Ben McAdoo's doing, maybe living in New Jersey for too long gets him like that. He's like, yeah, we made the playoffs, I'm ready to coach the New York Giants. You're not, you're awful. Finally fired, I'm so happy that he's gone. Absolutely awful. Now this brings up a whole different um, debacle of situation because the question is no longer will Jerry Reese and Ben McAdoo be fired. They're both gone. Very pleased about that. But it brings up who is the next head coach for the New York Football Giants? Who is the next general manager? Who's going to lead this franchise? And when the new organization comes in, and I'm sure it won't be one like organization from another team, it'll be you know, different pieces from either out of the league right now or on teams right now that will be addressed later in the offseason. It's who's the head coach, who's the GM, what do they want to do with the franchise? Are they going to stick with Eli Manning? Are they going to stick with potentially Davis Webb down the line? Do they want to draft a quarterback? It really depends so much on who is chosen to be the next coach, who's chosen to be the next GM, who's going to get this franchise back into the playoffs, back into the Super Bowl contention, and that's what it's all about. The Giants do have some good pieces on the roster. We take a look at, you know, provided everyone is healthy, Sterling Shepard. I don't know why I'm starting with him, but great slot receiver. You have Odell, obviously top five receiver in the NFL. At tight end, Evan Ingram has been okay this year. He's made some big plays, and he's been that one main target that the Giants have utilized when they haven't had anybody else. He needs to get better hands. He's dropped so many passes, and he can't run block at all. He's a glorified receiver, which is fine, but you got to decide how you want to play him because him on the line is not really the best fit. He's a mismatch. Linebackers can't cover him. I understand that, but he's a wide receiver. That's basically what Evan Ingram is. And apart from that, you have no running back. Paul Perkins is awful, right? Shane Vereen is older, and he's a third down running back primarily. And then you have Orleans Darkwood that's actually been fairly consistent and good his entire career with the Giants and has never really gotten a chance. But let's be real, he's not really the primary running back option that you'd like for a team. Offensive line, Eric Flowers has been an absolute bust, disappointment, worst offensive lineman in the NFL up until this year, where he started off the season absolutely terribly and then has actually put in some good performances over the past several weeks, which is uncharacteristic of him. Also good, Justin Pugh when healthy is probably a top 10 um, guard, at least left guard in the NFL. And then Weston Richburg has been good in the past. He's kind of a weird thing. I don't think he's going to stay with the Giants for, uh, for the majority of his career. I think he's going to go somewhere else within the next year or two. I don't think the Giants are going to re-sign him. Then you have John Jerry, who's a disaster, and pretty much whoever else they want to start at tackle. You know, it's been DJ Fluger playing some guard, John Jerry at tackle. It's been a weird situation. He's also awful. On the defensive line, Olivier Vernon is the top defensive end in the NFL. Same thing with JPP. Defensive line, um, on the interior, you have Dalvin Tomlinson, who's had an amazing rookie season out of Alabama. And you have, of course, uh, Damon Harrison, probably the best nose tackle in football. In the secondary, you have Janoris Jenkins, who's a pretty good cornerback. DRC is a weird situation. He's an older player now. 
and hasn't been the most consistent. And it's been weird with Janoris Jenkins' his DRC getting infinitely or indefinitely suspended over the course of the season. It's like, what is going on? Eli Apple is terrible. Ross Cockrell is, is whatever. Like, there's no there's no cornerback really other than Janoris Jenkins that I think is going to be in the long term future for the Giants. And the safety, I don't really think Darian Thompson is a starting caliber safety. He hasn't shown that he is. And then strong safety options you have Lennon Collins, one of the best safeties in the NFL. And at linebacker, absolute disaster. Devon Kennard is decent at left outside linebacker, but there's nothing else there. Middle linebacker, Calvin Munson has been starting. You know, I say, oh, B.J. Goodson, B.J. Goodson is kind of whatever. And then Jonathan Casillas is awful, even though he's a captain. It's a terrible situation, but you have pieces is my point. So now it's getting the coaching staff, getting the general manager that to build up the team even more because you have to start having better drafts. You can't be so complacent, oh, sit back, we pick here, we pick here, we can't trade up, can't trade down. This is just how it is. Be aggressive, make moves. The only thing Jerry Reese has ever done, right, is go into free agency and sign a bunch of players in one season because he was going to be fired if he didn't do something. He signs Olivier Vernon, signs Janoris Jenkins, signs Damon Harrison. Three gigantic free agent signings, bringing Brandon Marshall as well. You're like, okay, he's doing something here, but that's never really the formula for success. You have to build through the draft. That's what it's all about. Jerry Reese has never done that at a high level. His only good picks over the past... We'll, we'll even call it pretty much a decade here, um, dating back to 2007, where they took Aaron Ross in the first round, which I love him out of Texas, but he was never a good player. Um, but it's been Odell Beckham Jr. in 2014, and it's been Landon Collins in 2015, where they actually did trade up to get him in the second round. But aside from that, it's pretty much been nothing. Terrible picks. I mean, you remember Marvin Austin in the second round, maybe. For the Giants, he isn't anything. He never even played, really. There are so many busts, so many bad players. Eli Apple, Eric Flowers. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of players that the Giants draft high that turn into nothing. Bust, terrible players. And it's not even like you can't see it from a mile away. Because the Giants had this mantra and this style of, okay, we're going to, we like our guys. So even if he's like a fourth round caliber player, we want to get him in the second. Like Jay fucking Bromley in the second or the third, I think it was a third round pick. He wasn't supposed to go to like the fifth or the sixth and his talent showcased that he doesn't even play. It's, it's an out, it's an awful situation. Anyway, I've ranted for long enough. I feel like I'm just super excited that Jerry Reese and Ben Crapadu are finally gone. They've been so bad. Jerry Reese, honestly, more than anybody else. Because Ben McAdoo, it's like, all right, whatever. Horrific play caller. Was carried by Aaron Rodgers. That's the only reason he had an offensive coordinator job. And then a head coaching job in New York. Was Aaron Rodgers the most talented quarterback in NFL history? Whether you like it or not, he is. That's a fact. Get better drafting. You know, build through the draft. Build up the team. Get back to the playoffs. Get back to the winning championships because that's where everyone wants to be. All right. I've ranted for long enough. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got something out of this. I'm not even sure how coherent my thought process was, but I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.